Hello, everybody. Welcome to RDA Tech Q&A. You've got questions. We've got guesses. Um, for those of you joining us for the first time, I'm Nash. I do Radio Dead Air, and I have for 17 and a half years now. Before I moved out here. And uh, But uh, I also have a long history of working in the tech industry. Um, with me is always my producer, Mike Gearman, over there. He uh, he has a similar storied history in the tech business. Um, tonight, we are going to be answering your tech questions. If you have them, send those to requests at radiodeadair.com. Put tech Q&A in the subject line so we know what they're about. Um, we're going to answer a bunch of those questions. Now, normally, we'd start the show talking with news stories. But since the this is the holiday shopping season, and since we're doing this weekly now, and it is December, um, I wanted to, this week, we're going to be doing, um, we're going to look at, people ask, and, and we get this these questions a lot, people ask about what's a good computer part, what should I buy for my computer, what should I do for this, so we're going to try, for at least December 2017, we're kind of going to give you the lowdown on what you should get if you're building a computer. Um, this week is going to be the budget week. This week is going to be if you don't have a whole lot of money, but you still want a gaming computer, we're going to try and help you out a little bit. Now, yeah. when we say budget, we're, lo- we're not going to tell you how to magically build a gaming computer for $100. Oh. Because you probably could build a computer that would run games for 100 but it's not going to run anything new. Yeah, it's going to run some shit from maybe 10 years ago, but... You're not going to get Wolfenstein on that. Right. We're, we're, we're going to tell you how within... Uh, we'll give you like a total price tag estimate of what you'll need to get a basic computer going that will run games at the medium settings or sometimes the high settings, depending on how old the game is. We're, we're thinking 1080p gaming here. Maybe in some cases even 720p, depending on how powerful the game is. But, you know, if 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 you're if you're going to be uh looking for a computer for like a hundred bucks, your best option there is a refurbished Xbox. I'm I'm yeah. not being sarcastic there. That's 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 pretty much what I'm telling you because a hundred, two hundred dollars is not going to get you started with a good gaming PC. Um, that's that's it's just prices being what they are. It's just not possible. But we are going to r- do a quick rundown of parts now. Uh, the first place you start with your PC is with your processor. Um, and right now. We're in a good position with processors because um, there's a little bit of a price war going on. Yeah, and that's, of course, because AMD came out with something that's kicking a lot of ass for a relatively inexpensive right. price point. Right. And so Intel has gone, oh, they've got 80 to 85% of our capability on that chip, half the price. Shit. Yeah. Um, the first, the first, so we're going to be talking about while, uh, and probably we're going to talk about this in our, uh, mid range discussion. We'll talk more about Intel, but in our budget, we're going to be talking about Ryzen. Um, normally people would be going with like an i5 or, uh, for building a gaming PC. And it, to date, that was probably your best option, even though yeah. it was kind of pricey. Yeah, and a couple, and depending on the i5, a couple to several generations old. Yeah. Hello, puppy. That is the neighbor's corgi. Hello, neighbor's corgi. Um, now, th- th- in this case, we- we're ca- talking budget. So, um, we're trying to make every buck count on this. Um, that means we're, I can't recommend the um the overclocking versions of Ryzen. Uh and the reason for that is because if we if you want to be overclocking, you 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 have to have basically a, a good processor, uh, a good motherboard, and 
more expensive cooling. Yeah, and not only that, you also have to have a different motherboard. Ryzen has two versions of the motherboards. They have uh, one version that's just standardized, and the next version that will unlock and, and allow for the overclocking and everything. And that version is more expensive, so that's going to raise the price overall of the whole thing. Now, if you do want to go that route later, like maybe put a Ryzen 7 in there as opposed to a Ryzen 5. Something you might want to look about look at in the long term. Um, and at the moment, there is only a $10 price difference between... If it was just the CPU itself, it, we, we, we'd, we'd say go for it. Yep. But it's CPU processor, probably memory and cooling. Right. Um, Excuse me, CPU motherboard. I said CPU and processor, that's the same thing. So that we, if you're talking for a budget gaming build this year, um, you're looking at the Ryzen 5 1600. Um, potentially, now, it'll put you over a bit. The 1600X, potentially, just understand it's going to make things a little more expensive overall. The 1600, it's a 6-core processor, 3.2 gigahertz that boosts up to 3.6 gigahertz. Um... It will pretty much throw handle everything you throw at it. Yeah, uh, unless the only thing I can think of at the top of my head that it it won't necessarily handle is if you're doing a massive, say, 3D render and you expect it done quickly. It will do it. It right. will absolutely do it. But you might be running for a day or so, right, or right. or longer depending on the size of your render. Well, even still at six at six cores, it's yeah. pretty it's pretty hefty. But since I'm kind of focused more on the gaming side of it. That's kind of eh. even still the Ryzen's pretty good. Pro even the Ryzen five is a pretty good, not the best, not the fastest, not the most powerful, but it's a pretty good uh, overall processor and can handle games pretty, you know, reliably. So that's going to run you in the area of one hundred eighty nine ninety nine US right now. Uh, the overclocking version, the 1600X, is 199 So, we're yeah. looking in the $200 range for your processor. And I'm gonna write, I'm gonna scribble all these down so we have a full list. $200 range. Alright, so, well, I'll, I'll put, I'll just, I'll just put the processor at 200 Now, Zaf, you've got your yeah, processor. Let's, let's, when, we're, when we're giving costs, I'll always round up a little bit, because, you know, what, well, you may find a deal somewhere. You, you also need to add in things like tax and shipping if you're not buying locally. Right, right. And you don't want to suddenly go, I've got the money. So oh, I forgot tax. <laughs> yeah, we're all going to be dealing with taxes in a very different way soon. We're not a political show, so we probably shouldn't get into that one. Uh, all I can say is I'm happy I rebuilt my computer this year so I can write the son of a bitch off. Um... Moving right along. Next step after you pick your processor is your mother. Uh, that's that's the bait. Now, th this is one of those where people kind of look at the wrong thing when it comes to the motherboard. And I'm guilty of this. A lot of people are concerned with how the motherboard. I'm not even kidding. How the motherboard's going to look in the yeah. system. And and quite honestly, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. That to me has always been a, a ridiculous thing. Unless you are one of these guys who holds your system around to gaming things and part of it is showing off the system. It's the difference between buying a car that will get you to work and do everything you need to do and one that you take down to whatever your local uh, street car thing is and show it off how it bounces and has massive speakers and underglow and lights and things like that. Yeah. We're looking at what, what can you get going. Yeah. Um, I'm going to, in this case... Um... While it is a mini ITX, uh, the um, puppy, that's a corgi? Yeah, I think so. That's a big corgi. From that, from that side, that's the only dog they have. What is that side has? I think he's just outside barking at people. <sighs> Stop doing that. All right. Um, in this instance, uh, 
there there are three levels of um chip sets for Ryzen. Uh, there's the, and they they they're kind of n named in such a way that they're a little confusing. Um, there's the A level chipset, which is mainstream. Read that as bottom of the this? barrel. And we're not even going to talk about that for general use computer because that's one that's going to be never touching a game system. So that doesn't fit into the overall. Um, the next level up is performance, and that's the B series, and that's performance is the mid level ones. And then there's the X. Was, was that was that B as in Bravo? Yes, B as in Bravo. Uh, right now the chipsets are the A three twenty chipset. The B350, that's the performance level. And then there's the enthusiast level, which is the stupid, powerful, overclocking, everything unlocked. Um, that's the X370. Now, we're like I said, the A320 is the one that does not have overclocking enabled. So we're going to set that one aside. Um, Just because you might want to upgrade in the future, and this will, will give you a board you can have possibilities on. We're going to be talking about the B... 350 chipset and in this case gigabyte has released one uh in the hundred dollar range which is that's fairly good for a motherboard here's the downside it's what's called mini itx um that means it's not a, a full-size motherboard it will work in a, in a regular motherboard case but it's a little one yeah. um it's the Gigabyte Alpha Bravo 350 Nelson game. It's AB350N Gaming Wi-Fi. The reason I'm bringing this one up is while it is a mini system, mini ITX motherboard, that's not my derg. That's Mike's, it's Mike's neighbor's derg. It's not my derg. It's not my dag. It's the other guy's dag. Is that a dag? Um, while the mini ITX does limit you in some ways, like most specifically, you can only use one PCIe slot. That's all that's available on the system. So your video card, that's it. There's no more expansion outside of USB expansion. The price is good. The build is good. And it's got the features you'd need to build you can overclock with this but like we said with overclocking comes higher level cooling now um correct me if i'm i'm pretty sure that the the ryzen cpus i haven't bought one yet uh the ryzen cpus aside from threadripper they do come with their own in it with their own coolers correct i believe so yeah. yes let me i'm gonna look that up on new i think it real comes quick. up with the rise with the with the wraith cooler the, that really nice one that uh, AMD uh, came up with near the end of the FX line. Uh, yeah, yeah, the Ryzen comes with the Wraith cooler. Now, this is a... We're moving from motherboards to cooling now. Um, while the Wraith cooler is a good cooler that will get the job done, that's all it's made to do. It's... It's... Uh, it's... The, the the stock cooler. That's it. It's not made to run overclocking. It's not run made to run the processor any faster than it comes out of the box as. And for your mainstream for, for this this uh budget build, that will be fine. If you're ever gonna upgrade later and upgrade and and you know do more stuff. That's when you should be worried about getting uh, a better cooler for your system and tinker with it then. But for right now, the the Wraith, that'll do the job. Either on the overclocking version or the... And that's one of the things you might want to do. You might want to get the 1600X Ryzen 5 and worry about overclocking it later and just run it at stock speeds while you have it, which you can. Um, But... Uh, the, the other consideration there is the difference between the Ryzen 1600 and 1600X is power. Um, the 1600 runs at 65 watts. 
the 1600X runs at 95 watts. So you're going to have to have a significantly larger power supply, probably in the order of 50, 50 extra dollars, I would say, on power supply. Well, I mean, we could, yeah, we're, we're look, these days we're looking at um, a $75 power supply. But I think we could I, do... I, I tend to overpower my systems, but that's just me. Now, to go to, I, mean, I, I want to go back to motherboards very briefly. Mm -hmm. One thing about motherboards, you can often find deals on sites, especially this time of year. So while Nash recommended the, the uh, ITX model, uh, Newegg has deals right now for the ATX, basically of the same thing, you know, slightly bigger, you know, motherboard, more capabilities. You're not limited to one uh, PCI slot uh, for just a few dollars more. So if if there's wiggle room in your budget, going from an ITX to an ATX is possibly where you want to look. It gives you your most expansion capabilities most upgrade capabilities so how many what's the model number on that one uh let me go back and look that was did i close okay um the model number uh gigabyte was uh g a a x mm -hmm. 370 gaming and right now they, they're saying open box version which means someone has opened it or returned it because hey, they didn't like it or it didn't fit their 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 board or something. But Newegg has a great return policy, by the way. Um, is going for one ten. Okay, so but yeah, we're we're so we're in the ballpark of about hundred to one hundred twenty five. I would say hundred to one hundred twenty five on motherboard. Okay. Yes. Now I have. Uh, do, do you have anything else to add to that one or no 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 uh, processor with fan? You're looking probably in the hundred and fifty to two hundred range though. Okay, now um, I have uh, for power supply, and this is a good one that will last you for a while, and it's it's kind of at a budget price. Um, Corsair has been my go-to for power supplies. Corsair, um, I've used some thermal takes when I've had to, but Corsair makes really good power supplies that are surprisingly quiet. And in this regard, um, I'd recommend it for the budget build um the corsair cx 650 and that's going to run you 60 dollars. it's a 650 watt power supply which is not going to be running the biggest of the big boys but that is still a pretty hefty power supply for your system um it's also not fully modular which when we're talking about power supplies, there's two types. There's the old version, and now they have something called modular. And there's fully mar modular and partial modular. Modular means all... If you've ever seen a power supply, we call it a squid or an octopus because it has all of these cables coming off of it. Each one of those goes to a component of the computer to provide it with power. Modular does a really smart thing. It allows you to only plug in the cables you need to power specific parts of your motherboard. It's it's great because it keeps the inside of the box a bit cleaner, uh, you know, with, that, with, with not just cables dangling everywhere. Uh, and that improves airflow. Yeah, that that's airflow is, you know, the less cables you have in your box, the easier the air can move through your system and keep it cool and keep it from overheating. That's kind of a big deal. Now, um, there is one problem huh. with, with the modular cable system. And that is remembering where you, you put, put all the, the extra cables. Yep, I've had that problem. So I upgrade my system and I'm like, God damn, where's the extra cable for this? Um, the Corsair CX650 right now is selling for about $60 US on Amazon and elsewhere. That's a really good price. That That's, you know, a, what, a dollar or $10 a watt or... Yeah. Yeah. Now... Now, one thing to ten dollars ten dollars for hundred watts, yeah, something like yeah. That. One 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 thing to one thing to note though. Nash has said six fifty. When you're building your computer, look at the power requirements for the components you're building because you might not go with what we say. Right, right. And you might you, you might end up with oh, I got a deal on this this other component that happens to draw more power, but you know you it's mm -hmm. normally twice the price and you got it half off because you knew a guy or it fell off the back of a truck or something or whatever. 
and and just yeah. correct me this is one of the, the briefly here mike this is one of those uh ones that confuses some people um motherboard power requirements are included as part of the cpu power requirements am i correct on that one i think that's reasonably accurate to yeah. say state so when um, you're looking because for... the motherboard motherboard's not in, inherently itself drawing much power there's the only the, the probably the biggest power draw on mod, modern motherboards other than the processor is your led lights so when you don't when you when you're figuring up the power requirements for your system where you're looking at what the components need power wise consider the motherboard and cpu as a single unit for looking at power draw for looking at how yeah. much how big your power supply needs to be so what you do just since we're talking power is take your your video card take your processor take any other major components that, such as drives mm -hmm. and add up all those power requirements and make sure you have at least that big a, a power supply i would go probably 50 to 100 watts over your minimum requirement because then you're not upgrading if you go well i need to add another drive oh things aren't working yeah and a 650 not only is it uh, a good that's about that, that's considered a little above average these days with the kind of build you're going with right we're probably going to steer you toward it's going to be a little bit more than you might need honestly so and that's yeah. good that's good Have, having more power than you need is one of those good having more power capacity um than you need on a on a system build is one of those good problems um that means you can upgrade later uh now obviously there are other types of of components out there this this is just a recommendation on my side i i have had experience with corsair stuff and especially even their budget models these things th th what's one of the best things about them they are reliable they're hefty they, they they're good components uh but they're also quiet i mean as the grave which is really nice because Power supplies tend to have huge fans on them, and if it's badly built, if it doesn't make, if it doesn't have really good cooling built into the the power supply, those things go. They sound nasty if they put a nasty fan in there. It buzzes. It's 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 no fun. It's no fun for everybody. Anybody. So now, if you're in a high noise area, you might not care about the buzzing on the power supply. Yeah. Hang on a second. I need to take a quick break here and do something. Okay. Was was something trying to escape, Mike? That was a spider. That was a sp Oh, why you killed a spider? Because I am hugely arachnophobic and I didn't oh. want it loose in my room. I'm sorry. He just wanted to eat your bugs, Mike. Mike, Tough. he just wanted to eat your bugs. He just wanted to eat the bugs, Mike. You have no idea how arachnophobic I am. Okay. Well, I think Tara might. You too, I swear. Okay, so we're moving on to the next component of your budget gaming build. Now remember, this is this is budget tier. This is entry level gaming. This is 1080p. You might not be able to turn up all the settings on the latest games, but you can play them and at a reliably good frame rate too. Um, graphics is the next thing, and unfortunately, this is the area where AMD has just has not kept up i mean they, they just really so nvidia is still crushing it in gaming graphics now one of the things i like to do with budget builds is keep in mind stuff for the future because the first thing if you're if you're a gaming pc the first thing you're going to upgrade in your system whether it's eventually or very soon is your graphics card so your initial graphics card has to be a balance of I didn't spend a ton on this thing, but it was worth what I spent on. And that that's it's kind of a mix to get. Um, in this case, 
my recommendation, and it is not, th- again, this is not going to be super high-end 4K gaming. That's not what we're going. This is a budget build. Um, I'm recommending Gigabyte's uh, GeForce GTX 1050 2 gigabyte card. Um, yeah, it's a solid card. That's $120, so it's a for what you get for it, it's a really good value. Um, now, again, you are not going to be playing like your Call of Duties or your your Witcher 3s at like all the settings turned to high at super high level. This is for 1080p gaming. Sometimes, depending on the game, you have to do 720 just to get by. But um, for $120, this is a really, really good jumping off point. Um, and it, another bonus here is it doesn't require any extra cables from the power supply. If you're just getting started with building a computer, this is as simple as plugging in a Nintendo cartridge. If you remember how to do that, some people don't, but it is, it, it's about as simple as you take, remember the super Nintendo had that thing on the top and you just slipped it in and clicked it in place. That's, That's about still a- that's still a bit too dated for some of our audience. Even the Super Nintendo? Darn! Um, so, yeah. Um, even with that, uh, for $120, the Gigabyte uh, GeForce GTX 1050 2-gigabyte version, that's a good starting point. And it, within a year, that's the first thing you're going to be... With any gaming PC, the first thing you're going to be looking to upgrade later on is going to be your graphics. With this way, you still, during that year, while you're waiting later on to upgrade your graphics card to save a little money, I've been there, I've done that, you're still going to get a ton of utility out of this card. And it also doesn't require much power, which overall, that's that's just, it's a win. It's a win, win, win. And it's a fairly quiet card as well. Yeah, that's another... it's so weird that, that one of the considerations for building a computer is noise level and the video card noise level. But that one, yeah, that is a rely, uh, a decent one. Now, you could, if you're willing to stretch your budget by $50, step up to a 1050 Ti. But honestly, I would rather say, set aside that money and save for something like a GeForce 1070 down the road. Um... That's an expensive card overall, uh, comparatively. The 1050 is around 120. The 1070 is in the 400 to 500 dollar range these days. Thanks, crypto miners. Um, but I recommend Gigabyte because I've had good experience with them. Yeah, my video uh, cards- MSI is another name brand if you can find a cheaper model yep. of theirs. Um, and they have the same capability. They have 1050, which uh, I want to say still also doesn't require additional power um and msi is one of the also solid companies um and by the way when we recommend a a brand name like gigabyte or msi it's Mm -hmm. because we've got the experience with them we're not getting paid or anything god i wish god God, i wish you know i wouldn't i i wouldn't necessarily even want to be paid money product yes yes give me stuff give me stuff but no um will jr brings up a point to also consider in all this uh, he says he has a 750 Ti in his rig. This is at $120. If you know a gamer or anyone who plays video games with their computer and they've got an aging video card like a 750 Ti, a 1050 for them, a GTX 1050, will be a massive upgrade. Yeah. And the good news about the 1050 is. Any system built within the last five years, and that, I, I, that's a guesstimate, but I feel like it's a safe guesstimate. Any, any system built in the last five years will be able to handle a GTX 1050. Most of them, even ones you bought off the shelf, will not need a new power supply because it, the 1050 draws such low power requirements. So by itself, even without building a computer, For the gamers you know, a GTX 1050, if they have an old video card, if they, if they, if you know people who are just stuck with this old damn machine, a GTX 1050 would be 
a big upgrade for them. And it might be and one hundred twenty dollars. That's not a huge cost for a nice gift for someone, you know. Um, let's see. What's the next thing we need to look at? We need to look at uh, memory. Hmm? memory. Memory. Yes. Now, this is one that I'm not usually too picky about, partially because there are so many different models of memory. Um, and at the budget level, another thing here is having the super highest timing RAM is not going to make as big of a difference as it would in the high-level system. But you still want decent stuff. Um, what you're going to look for in this gen, and, and like I said, you're going to have to do some looking on this one because there are just so many different models of RAM. It's it's ridiculous. Um, you're going to have to look uh, for PC. These days, we're looking for PC 3200. Yeah, is the speed that that's about middle of the road. That's about what everything uh, um, is is available for. So 3200. Yeah. Um, and you're also obviously DDR4, because that's where we are right now. Um, as far as brand names go, I have had excellent experience with G Skill. That's G dot skill is the name of the brand. Uh, they tend to be a little less expensive than other stuff. Um, they have very good heat sinks built into their RAM quite often. Um, and that's the thing we wouldn't have thought you'd need it a few years ago was heat yeah. sinks in your RAM. Every well, every little bit helps, right? Yeah. Um, and for a budget build like this, eight gigabytes is going to be as much as you need. Yeah, we're doing now a budget probably, here. Now you're probably going to want to get that in two four gig sticks, right? You can probably find it in four two gig sticks, but again, your motherboard may only have a small number of memory slots, and you might want to save a couple for upgrades. And it helps to have the same stuff available. Yes. Uh, you know, not go, okay, I bought four sticks of two. I want to upgrade later and replace two of them with fours. You might not have a lot of luck. You also, might have some system instability. Also, as a recommendation, when you're buying multiple sticks of RAM, buy them together. Buy them in a kit. Do not buy them separately, even if they're the same model number. Because that could cause you all kinds of headaches. Yeah. Um, so I'd recommend G Skills, their Ripjaw series. That for a two sticks of RAM, that's about a hundred dollars for two sticks of yep. four gigabytes. Um, eight gigabytes of RAM, and even and I'm I'm going to warn you on this. This is going to be something you'll upgrade eventually because right now we're at that point that every generation has this with computers for a while. Four gigabytes was considered great, and then it started slowly slipping, and eventually eight gigabytes was where they were, and now we're slowly starting to slip towards six, but we're not quite to 16 gigabyte being the new standard. Not just yet. So eight gigabyte is still considered the standard, but we're kind of on that slope towards 16 gigabytes these days. Um... Yeah, Will Jr. says, PC Building 101, leave room for upgrading, especially if you're on a, on a budget build. Um, so you're looking at, uh, I'd recommend G-Scale Corsair. Again, we're talking about them again, but they do make good stuff. Um, A-Data is another company. Um, they're okay, but uh, comparable. And Patriot's another one that's that makes decent stuff. But overall, my, my, my number one pick is usually G-Skill because it's a good balance between price and functionality. And again, at this level of, um, of buying, don't worry about the timings because you're not going to be fucking with that at budget level. Don't the worry about... Thing you wor the only thing you worry about timings is if you go, uh, it's you know been a few months, I want to buy some more memory, buy the same timing what you had before. Right. Um... Hopefully the same brand, the same model number. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it, 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 you're not, again, upgrading is one of those things that you need a little bit of, you're going to have to focus a lot on the cooling or have to focus on uh, tuning it, playing with it. And if that's your thing, great. But at this level of it, we're just, we're, this is where we're just trying to just get people into a good PC 
that's also a base to jump off to other stuff later. Um, let's talk about storage. Well, I am, but one okay. more thing about memory really yeah. quickly. Go ahead. And that's installing it. Con consult your uh, motherboard manual to make sure you're installing your memory in the right memory slots because sometimes it makes a difference. Yeah, this is, this is, it, it, it's a long winded double data rate, memory banks bound together, quad data rate. You don't have to worry about that with Ryzen, but there are different, you have to look at your motherboard, even though it would look funky. Sometimes you put one stick here and then one stick way over here, but they are the same, they're the same memory bank of that slot. It's weird. But and yeah. depending on the motherboard, you may actually have, they may be, you know, bank zero, bank one, and you have to populate bank zero first. Yeah. So read your motherboard manual on that. Yeah. Remember, we're, when we're talking about computers, counting starts at zero. It doesn't start at one. It starts at zero. That's that's a little, when you're you're assembling stuff. Now, for storage... Everyone's going SSD, a combination of SSD and old style hard drive. But remember, this is our budget build. And the nice thing about this is you could quite easily move to an SSD later. Um, because every SSD that comes out has some sort of migration software that lets you take your, your operating system and just the operating system and all that stuff on it and move it to a new drive and keep your uh store your regular old hard drive for storage now ssds do make a good bit of difference in booting up and launching programs and stuff but they are costly the price per gigabyte on ssds is jesus criminy and we what it you don't want any less than one terabyte even on a budget build, you don't want to drive smaller than one terabyte because initially that's going to be your only hard drive. And when you do eventually move toward a um, SSD later, that one terabyte is going to be your system storage. So you're going to want to have enough. Um, I what's what's your I tend to like. Uh, what was it? That start company started with an H. Hitachi? Hitachi? No, yeah, yeah. Hitachi. What did they move to? They got bought out. Um, we're talking. We're talking. We're talking hard drives here. Yeah. No, oh, I still have New Egg open. We're going to go desktop internal hard drives. Yeah. And we're going to look at. Well, there's HGST. That's the H's. one. That's the one. HGST that used to be IBM Desktop. If you say so. Yeah. That. That was it. Thank you, Org Command. HGST, um, they they do they do good drives. They have a low failure rate. People seem to be general generally happy with them. That's good. You want a drive not gonna fail. I speak good now. Um, but yeah, that, that's a low failure rate, a uh, reliable system. That's what you're looking for in a drive. And also, no price. Let's see. Um, <sighs> well, for, for, for HGST, which is listed still in a lot of places as Hitachi, just so you know. Oh, it's still Hitachi? Uh, okay. All right. No, it's just still listed. It's still it's Hitachi GST. Oh, okay. Um, according to at least this part of New And that Yeah, um, they're bought out by Western Digital. Yeah. But they're still their own brand, at least. Yeah. So you're looking anywhere from thirty to sixty dollars for a uh, seven hundred and fifty uh, gig drive, uh, up to sixty dollars for a two terabyte drive from them. And this is new, not refurbished. I don't right. recommend refurbished drives. By ne the way. Yeah, because that's one of those you don't you don't want to play with that. Um. So what what uh what's the two terabyte one? Well, I'm getting to sold by Newegg rather than third party because then you're dealing with Newegg's return. Yeah. Uh, uh, two ter well, one terabyte for ninety dollars and two terabyte for sixty dollars was a third party vendor. Okay. Uh, two terabytes uh, looks like. Come on. 
The way they list these things is, is ridiculous sometimes. Uh, two terabytes looks like it's about 120 to 130 dollars. All right, let's go with one terabyte then, because okay. uh, one terabyte, ninety dollars. So yeah, so about hundred dollars for hard drive, because dollars to storage capacity, it's important to keep that in mind. Um, you're, with an SSD, you get much a two hundred fifty dollar a, a two hundred fifty gigabyte SSD drive would be in the hundred dollar two hundred dollar range they've come down but they're still kind of pricey compared yeah. to one terabyte and remember you can always get the ssd later it'll speed up your system it'll be fun to play with but to start with get the one terabyte or two yeah the the one terabyte no there was a two terabyte drive yeah get the two terabyte uh the terabyte hard drive um HGST, good brand. I've never had a problem with them. Uh, they've actually done tests. They, there's this uh, company that will take all of the hard drives on the market and hook them up and leave them running and, and put them in a server environment where they're constantly being used and see how long it takes before the drives fail. And consistently for a long time, Hitachi, HDST, they just failed they the were, lease. They were kept, they kept going after everything else that had died. Yeah. Now, if you decide for whatever reason you don't like Hitachi and you want to go for, say, Western Digital, mm -hmm. which is the same company, different brand name, mm -hmm. the trick you've got to worry about with Western Digital is they label their drives strangely. They've got color codes they use on their drives, and you have to make sure that you're buying the proper color code. For example, they will sell you a drive that's with purple colors on it, that is a surveillance drive. Do you know what a surveillance drive is? It's a slow speed drive that is intended for recording surveillance video. Yeah. That, oh yeah, let's talk about drive speed just briefly so people understand. With old style hard drives, the speed the, the data gets read at, the, the, that it gets to the system at, is entirely dependent on, well, mainly, but quite a bit dependent on how fast the drive is spinning like a record player um there are two main standards there's a third but it's not really used much anymore since ssds came out that was the 10,000 rpm standard they don't really use that much anymore there are two main ones 5400 rpm and 7200 rpm Get yeah. the 7200 RPM. It's a few dollars difference and it makes a world of don't bother. 5400 RPM drives, just they're, they're, don't even bother. Don't even bother. Yeah. Now, the other thing to worry about with the drive is, is the only other thing you really worry about is how big the cache on the drive is. Yep, which that's is, the other part um, that affects speed. Is a, is a chunk of memory on the drive that says, this is what I think you're going to be loading next. I'm going to load preload this. Oh, look, it's here. You're done. Yeah, it's a little bit of RAM that's actually built into the, the drive itself. Uh, it can't be upgraded, so you, what you get is what you get. Yeah. Uh, a lot of, uh, I think 64 is about the standard. I've seen... 64 is standard. 128 is not uncommon. Beyond 128 is, kind, uh, is a little rare. Just... Know that when you buy the drive, sixty even a 32, 32 gigabytes will be fine. Or thirty-two megabyte uh cache. It'll say thirty it'll say cache on it. You'll see how much it uh thirty-two megabyte cache will get you by. Sixty-four is preferable. A hundred and twenty-eight might be a bit overkill. Now, one thing you might want to avoid, because it'll give you possibly give you a lot of frustration. I know we're saying, hey, be, you know, be effective, be, you know, cost effective, be, you know, power effective. Green drives are usually a lot more trouble than they're worth. Yeah. Because they do things like, oh, you're not using me right now. I'm going to shut down. So you're not uh, drawing lots of power. And then they have sometimes problems spinning back, back up. up again. Not that they, Not that they don't start back up. It's just that it's like, oh, I'm about to go do this on my computer. And... I'm waiting several seconds, several frustrating seconds for the drive to spin up so it can read that file. 
<sighs> All right. I guess the last thing we want to talk about is the case. Yes. Now, now for, for me, a case is pretty much a case. Mm -hmm. uh, unless unless you really want to spend a lot of money on a case, um, it really is just a box to put the rest of the components in. Well, you also you do have to take into consideration some of them are not don't have enough proper ventilation, which is much True. rarer these days because most companies have hopped on board and they 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 they've they've kind of said, yeah, we should probably make these things a little more efficient. So I'm gonna say the first thing to look for, the first thing is not to look for in a case. Let's cross out things. Any odd shaped case. Don't do it. It may it may look cool. You may think, oh that's fantastic. That's amazing. It's not worth it because they often have upgrade limitations where you can't put things in there that you thought you could because it it's cool and funky looking, but that funky shape comes with the drawbacks of mm -hmm. can't fit beyond this many cards in or can't fit beyond one drive in. Yeah, not worth it. Um. I would recommend, and I've I've built a ton of these. I've gone with with uh, higher price ones, lower price ones. Newegg has a house brand called Rosewill, um, and I would recommend the Rosewill Challenger. You'd have to get this from Newegg, um, but it's it's a nice compromise between cost and. Uh, what's available for it, expandability, you can add more fans and stuff later, it's a good base to build off of. Now the fans on it, I'll warn you, they're gonna be loud. You can upgrade them later. Remember, this is where this is your jumping off point. The Rose Will Challenge, and I'll let people have a look at it so they can get an idea of what your computer will look like. Because this does matter to people, what their computer looks like kind of matters to them. Let me let everybody see. Your, your 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 choices are going to be black, 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 and more black, usually at the budget build level. Well, it's so sad, too, because it used to be they were making some really great colored cases. They had, like, green ones and pink ones. And I had one for the longest time, a computer case that was this beautiful blue piano finish. My camera's acting up again. I loved it. Hold on a second. I'm going to unplug and replug my camera. I may disappear. Oh God, it disappeared. Oh no, where am I? Where's Nash? Where'd he go? It's a mystery, that's why the question mark's there. I disappeared. Oh hell. Yeah, but I can say your colors are pretty much, if you, if you go to Newegg and look, your colors are black, 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 and then they do, actually they still do have nine pink cases. Nine different models of pink case that they sell. But those no, are a little outdated no, those are now. In any event, uh, the Rosewill Challenger, um, it's $50. It's a good jumping off point. It'll last you a while. You can build a bunch of stuff into it. And it will... You can upgrade it later. It will be good. Good system. Hello? Hello? Oh, it's just my, my audio thing is a little out of whack. That's okay. Um, so the, the next thing that's, that's about all the components there. Cause we're going to be using stock cooling. We're going to be, uh, all the other stuff. The last thing is, do you want an optical drive? It's totally optional these days. It, it, it is. Uh, they're not expensive anymore. Yeah. Um, so if you decide you want one easy to get, if you decide you don't and you want to add one later, really easy to install. It's the it's a difference of twenty dollars, pretty much. Yeah. Now the only thing, actually, the only other thing we haven't covered mm -hmm. is operating system. So pretty much yeah. these days, Windows ten. If you can afford it, I would go Windows ten Pro versus Home. Yeah. Um, but other than that, Windows ten, unless you're a Linux fanatic, in which case you probably know more about building your own computer already than we've talked about. Yeah. So. And, when we, and, and and if you're a Mac person, God help you. Okay, so at the end of all of this, tallying it up, and again, we call this our budget bill because building any lower just isn't worth it. 
building anything any less than what we're recommending, it, it's just going to cost you money in the long run because once you built anything cheaper than this, you're going to get frustrated what with it and upgrade it anyway. So it's in the long run, it's going to cost you more money. What we've recommended will is about with all sales right stuff right now, especially the holiday season. It's in the seven hundred dollar range. And which, you'll have a decent computer. You will have a very good computer, even and that will run pretty much just about every game you can throw at it. You might not be able to turn it up to all the way to full settings, but you'll be good. Um. So yeah, and you'll it will last for a while. You'll have a platform to build stuff up off of. I know everyone's out there going seven hundred dollars. I can get an Xbox One X for five hundred. You could, but why? Because you know, and even if you, but yeah, that's you can go with cheaper stuff. You can go with less powerful components. Just understand, you're going to have to upgrade those later. And the nice thing about yeah. the Ryzen platform is AMD is committed to the AM4 uh, socket for Ryzen through 2020. Which quite, which quite likely means when a better, faster version of AMD's Ryzen comes out, you will be able to take it off the shelf, drop it in your computer, and go with it without upgrading anything else, without replacing your motherboard. without play It will just go. That's a big one right there. This one, this one gives you some room to expand. Can you do homework on an Xbox? Yes, you can. I, okay. I'm not. What? I'll take your word for it. There is a version of a uh, window of Microsoft Edge on the Xbox. Yeah, I saw you complaining about that earlier. Yes, I. you can do your homework. You could put it like on your Google Drive or something and Google Docs and open the shit up there. You can do it. Does it, it hold on. Doesn't using a customized edge on Xbox to do things on Google Docs violate a law of nature? <laughs> or Alice is like, Wait, what? Yeah, if if you could you or you could use uh Office 365 or one of those on on Edge, you could do it. It will make you want to shit blood. But you can do it. So yeah, that 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 covers our 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 recommendations for the budget bill. We'll talk next week we're going to go with what we call the mainstream bill, which is the general yeah. Now, the only other thing I would add possibly to this budget built ah. is an external drive of a comparable size to your main drive. Backups. To do a backup with. Yeah. Just per to periodically back up your system. You will save yourself a lot of headache and possibly a lot of heartache and possibly a lot of Nash, Mike, is there any way I can recover my data? <laughs> All right. Well, that's going to handle the build side of it. You could also build your own laptop, but you won't if you don't hate yourself. You could, I guess, maybe, sure. Maybe you could 3D print a case for it or something. Uh, or you could whittle, you could whittle a, a case for a laptop. Yes, you could. You could whittle yourself out of a case out of wheat. Yeah. <laughs> I think who did I get that from? That's from They call me Tater Salad, Ron White. He he mentioned whittling something out of wheat. Yeah. I, I don't remember what it was, but that's where I got that line. You whittle a laptop case out of wheat. But yes, <laughs> Mr. Fix It, build your own laptop. Not today, Satan. Not today. <laughs> uh you know, I probably know someone who has, but oh. That was the dream for the while, though. Though, build your own laptop, just off the shelf parts. That never happened. We tried. Lots of companies tried. Yeah, yeah, and and you know, and some of them Failed. better than others. Some of them, uh, you know, what was that company that here will sell you a laptop or 
We'll sell you the components of the laptop and we'll let you install Mac OS on it without paying the Mac licensing fees or something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I forget who they were, but they had they had a brief but brilliant run in that they caused a lot of heartache and headache and news stories. Anyway, all right. So now it's time for questions. Folks, just so you know, if you have questions for us for uh, tech Q&A, send those to requests at radiodeadair.com. Mike and I will attempt to do it. Um, just to let you know, next week we're going to do our what's called a mainstream build, where we're probably going to be looking at stuff in about, for a computer, the $1,200 range for a, a, a computer build. A lot of it's going to be the same, but a lot of it's going to be different. And then the week after that, we're going to go with the enthusiast build, where it's just like, fuck it. We're going to build a monster. We're going to build a monster. And that's, when we go enthusiast build, anything I said about cases earlier might go out the window. Might go out the fucking window. But it will be in a case, it'll be in a situation where the case is a monster too. It just happens yeah. to look massively cool. Yeah. And possibly be self-motorized and has a seat on it and rolls around. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I, and I know even right now I'm hearing $700 and I'm going, oof, I had to pay $200 today to replace a pipe. What Shit, kind of pipe? What? What kind of pipe? Um, a galvanized steel pipe. Well, I think it was steel. Galvanized pipe. Because it was 40 years old. And it had turned into a, it had rusted into a solid block. Yep. They had to climb under the house, yank the fucker out. Did they find the hot water heater? They did not. I'm getting a thermal camera. I swear to God, I'm getting a fucking thermal camera to find his goddamn water heater. So yeah, they had to replace the, uh, Two hundred dollars for them to, to find what the problem was, replace it. They use brass fittings and stuff now. So even though I know you're here in seven hundred dollars, there's a lot of shit I can spend. We're talking about this. This is a system that's going to last you for years. It's a basis. It not only it's a functional system immediately. It's a basis to build off of for later. So there you go. All right, we're going to start with uh, a follow up from last week. Uh, remember Andy sent us the question about the uh, blue snowball? Yes, yes. Yeah. It turned out I was half right. He did, in fact, here, here's what he said. Um, after trying the, the mic on another Win 10 machine, two Win 7s, and a crappy old Vista laptop, I, supported, I submitted a support ticket. Then I rechecked some things, and while I waited, I spotted something I should have seen earlier if I'd bothered to turn on a frickin' light. A serial number on the sticker wrapped around the mic that Blue said they stopped doing in 2009 on a mic I bought new last week. Um, From their FAQ, see a visible serial number on the tape encircling the body of your Blue Snowball mic, then we're sorry to say... Your snowball is too old to make the transition to newer operating systems. We've stopped putting serial numbers on. There aren't, any, there aren't any drivers that can update your older model snowball to make it compatible for current platforms. He's sending in a support ticket to try and get a refund. But what, yeah, I was exactly right on what happened was he bought. They found an old one in the, yeah, they found an old one in the back. They put it on the shelf. They sold it to you. He bought a blue snow. What happened last week, Andy could not get this blue snowball mic he bought brand new to work with his Windows 10 computer. And my theory was he'd gotten one with an old firmware on it and just needed to put it to another, another computer to update the firmware. Apparently, he got one that was so old, 2009, an eight-year-old blue snowball, new in box, he'd gotten one that was so old, it wouldn't even... So good luck with you, Andy. I hope Blue handles you pretty well and provides you with a new one since you did buy it brand new. I don't think I don't think Blue will be selling giving him a new one. It'll be whatever vendor he bought it from. They might, yeah. Yeah, I, I suspect he got it off Amazon and you know, hey, uh if if you know, or whoever, you know, whoever you got it from, hopefully they do right by you. So yeah, this is this is one to be aware of on the blue snowball mics. Um 
if it has a uh, visible serial number on the tape of the body of the blue snowball, it's essentially worthless now. It won't work with a modern computer. Um, yeah. I mean, you might be able to get to work under Linux, but but yeah, it's it's that that you can't use that microphone. Beware when you're purchasing one. It's a good microphone, but that 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 is a, that sucks. I'm sorry, Andy. I wish. I had hoped he could update the firmware by using an older operating system, but apparently that one's just dead. All right, let's see. Um, Eric has a question for us. Uh, oh, shit. Okay. <sighs> Eric writes, due to the Intel security issues, I updated my BIOS. As I did. Good. Good. As I didn't have a USB drive handy, it was done through Asus AI Suite 3 Easy Updates, which I think was a big mistake. Yep. Could could be, could be. No, not could. You say could be. Yep. Um, I've never used it. Now, whenever I turn on my computer, it stays locked as a solid black, black, black screen. I have to let it sit for a full hour with no pro progress. I also try pressing buttons to get the BIOS to show off, show up. If I turn the PC off manually, I get an error message when I said system is posted in safe mode. Please press F1 for setup. BIOS keeps all my changes. BIOS works fine. I've tried removing the battery and shorting circuit. Yeah, he's he's tried to flash to to um blank it out. <sighs> okay. Um He's asking, should he he redo he reflash the BIOS? Yes, that is. I, w I would, but I don't know that I'd use the Asus. Right, that's again. that's the thing. Okay, for those of you at home, there are two ways to update the firmware, the BIOS, the basic input output system of your your computer. That's what that's the compute that's the software that runs before Windows. It's what tells the computer what it is what it's supposed to do, and what all is attached to it. So the computer even knows what the hell it is. Um, sometimes this software has to be updated. Well, there are two ways to do it. The right way, and this is always, if you ever have to update your BIOS, it's not the easy way, but it's the right way, is normally through the BIOS itself. Um, they typically have an option. It's different between different manufacturers, but they typically have an option built into the BIOS. You get into it when the computer starts up by hitting, tapping the delete button or the F2 button or the F there's, there's a button. You have to check your manual to find out what it is. That allows you to update the BIOS by copying it from the website. You go into windows, you copy it from the website and you put it on a USB drive. Then, you restart your computer, you open up your BIOS options, put the USB drive into the computer, and you tell it, I'd like to update my BIOS, look on this USB drive, here's the file, use that. That's the right way to do it. However, every single motherboard manufacturer, even the really good ones, has a stupid way of doing it. They give you what's called easy options as part of their um, suite of applications. Tool. Yeah, tools that come with the with and, the and these, uh, and these and these suites will include often things like uh, here's a here's here's a crappy drive defragmenter, here's a crappy memory tester, here's a and it's it's all generally in house rolled stuff that they they put together and some of it may be actually decent, but as a category. The reputation wise, they're kind of lacking. And the worst of these is the easy BIOS updaters. Gigabyte has one, Asus has one, all of them have one. Um, it actually lets you try to update the BIOS while you're running Windows. And, and there are problems with this. Yeah. One of which is, and it's not necessarily documented, is that Windows and or whatever else other security software you're running may be looking for bias changes and may go, oh, hey, they're, they're, something's trying to change the bias. I shouldn't let that happen. 
and it doesn't know to let the easy thing go through, but doesn't stop it entirely. Yeah, it's it's it it's it, it is quite prone to failure, and when it fails, and this is why it's so stupid. When and if it fails, you end up with problems like Eric's here, where the fucking BIOS, the 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 software the computer needs to even know that it is a computer. Yeah, let's back up a step, by the way. Yeah. I, I said this in the channel, but let's say it here. Uh, BIOS is basic input output system. It is the little tiny bit of programming that tells the computer when you power it up, you're a computer. Here are things you can do. You can read these devices that I found and identified, which if you look in your bias, it will say what it's found and identified. Talk to them for anything more important than basic communications. Yeah. It's also why when you look at your bias, it is generally a 16-bit color scheme because the bias can't handle anything no. better than 16-bit color scheme. You know, blue, yellow, red, black. Those are your those are your bias colors. Maybe green. So what what pretty much what happens is is by updating it through Windows, it borked itself because it's ne it's always an iffy when you update them. That's what any tech worth their salt will tell you. Never update the BIOS through Windows. Yeah. Now the good news is you can probably still fix this. Yes. We, we, and we know this because you're able to get into the BIOS. Right. In safe, there is a safe boot option on BIOS. That is one of the nice things. Normally, what's probably happened is you've loaded a backup BIOS or some such. Um, once you get into, go through the, the proper steps of updating the BIOS through the BIOS. Don't use Windows. Use that. So you're lucky you can still get to it. Now, check your motherboard because mm -hmm. uh, it will it will tell you what uh, uh, USB port you should plug into, go out, buy yourself a cheap USB thumb drive if you need yeah. if that's what you need to use. Or, hey, something we mentioned earlier, get yourself a USB external drive. Yeah, that'll work. For backup purposes, put it on there as well. It should still recognize it just fine. Yeah. And if not, spend the $15 to get a thumb drive. Because that's literally how much they cost these days. Um, let's, let's see what we can do with one of these quick ones. Uh, Michael has a quick one. Hello, Nash, Mike, and our Lord and Savior, Grady. Who has fucked off? He has fucked off. Uh, Michael writes, my oldest cousin is a hu huge in a mountain biking. I wanted to get him a GoPro camera or a valid equivalent for Christmas. However, I'm on a tight budget. Re I make fast food money. I feel you, man. And I'm currently week to week on paychecks. Any suggestions for cheap alternatives for a GoPro that will serve the same purpose and function equally or close enough to it? Well, Michael, mm. there's the, that's one of that's a tough one. Um, the reason the GoPro costs as much as it does is not just you know the the name recognition and the markup. The reason is it's built to be a tough little motherfucker. That's that's the yeah, whole I mean, point of it. The, the, these are these are devices that have been kidnapped by squirrels, run up trees, through trees, dropped, picked up and chewed on by dogs. There was a video I saw just the other day about a guy who set up a GoPro in a lava fissure, got distracted by tourists, lava came over, cooked the GoPro, and the memory card was still fine. Yeah, the, yeah, that's that's yeah. It can withstand can withstand liquid nitrogen for a few minutes. That's the reason the GoPro is so expensive. It is made it's made for all this crazy shit. You can what's the guy who sent what set one up in a balloon all the way into space? Do you see that one? Yeah, I saw that one, and then it dropped, and he was it still worked. Yeah. Um, well, part of that's because it's a light enough that its terminal velocity was low right. uh and it didn't hit that hard yeah so and not, it, not as hard as a person would also i want to reiterate we're not getting paid by gopro to save this these are just the basic facts the damn thing is a little tank yeah um, now if, if you're if you're insistent on getting something for him of this nature um 
you're 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 rolling your dice, you're taking your chances. Um, there is something on Amazon called Cameras Like GoPro, top selected products and reviews, and shows you stuff there anywhere from forty to seventy or eighty dollars. Uh, and some of them look okay. None of them look particularly stylish, like the GoPro tries right. to be. Um, but you know, it, it's an option. Yeah, I I don't pers- personally I don't have any experience with any. I I played with a GoPro once. It wasn't mine. Uh, I don't have much experience with the GoPro because I've never had a need for a GoPro. A GoPro is a very spe- specialized type of video camera. It's made for all the crazy shit people want to do, and it does it well. Um, yeah. Uh, th- there are some options here, however. I know it's still going to be pricey, but look for um, certified refurbished units. Those are always a good bet. They're cheaper. They, they'll they have some kind of warranty on them, and they'll still work just as well as a brand new one if you get it from a reputable source. Uh, you looking at prices now, Mike? Yeah, I'm looking at prices. You know, the GoPro, what they call the GoPro Hero 5, uh session holiday bundle well whatever is included there you know it's 250 dollars, right which i i agree that's that's a, a relative you have to really like yeah i i don't know hang on let me see if my brother's in the channel first i don't know that i have any family members i like that much <laughs> oh I did check to see if he was there first. <laughs> uh, he's trying not to spend more than $50 here, like the Walmart brand. I'm sorry, man. Okay, Walmart brand, I have nothing, I've heard nothing good about. Yeah. Um. Uh, there, there, There's a $50 version on Amazon. It's called an Autotech H9R action camera, 4K waterproof. It's got a four and a half star rating on 10 reviews. So, and it's fifty dollars. Yeah. And if you if you already have Prime or you know someone who has Prime, that's you know fifty basically fifty dollars. I yeah I, so, I I I pretty much at this I honestly say check reviews, read a bunch of them, see what people say, pros and cons. Um, d- do what you can, man. Uh, because like I I I honestly am pretty gonna say it's gonna be hard to find one that's the same quality. That has the same reputation, that has the same build, because that's that's entirely GoPro's uh, business model to do is yeah. to. So, good luck. Hopefully, you can find something appropriate for it. I wish we had better answers for you, but um, uh, this one this one might be you, Mike. Oh, but by the way, by the way, yeah. One thing to note about the 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 knockoffs, they often do not come with accessories that you may want for a GoPro, like head straps mounting hardware or memory cards so check that if you decide to go one of those routes look to see what it comes with (laughs) programming dude in the channel says i had a family member i like so much and got him a 512 gigabyte ssd that he was a complete ass and my sister divorced divorced him and will says i hope she got the ssd (laughs) dude yeah so do i uh, all right. This one might be your because you are you're Microsoft certified, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, in, in a couple areas, yeah. This one might be, I'm, and it, I'm it, certifiable in more. Why? Uh-huh. Um, but I'm feeling much better now. This might be uh, your wheelhouse more than mine. I'm more hardware, but you understand system administration and stuff. This this might help you. Uh, Scott says I've hit this error way too much. Is there a way of repairing the SRT trail error? Without reinstalling Windows, if there's no backup and or system image. You familiar with this one? Repeat that error message? SRT t- uh well I'll, I'll, I'll cut I'll copy it's in it's in the email. It's near the bottom. It's like the second to last question. Ah. SRT trail error without uh, reinstalling Windows. I I'm not familiar with that one off the top of my head. Mm. So let's see what it is. I haven't actually heard of it, yeah. Help, I've encountered the SRT trail text problem. Uh, okay, this is Windows. Uh, it says it needs to restart, then tries to auto repair. I have BitLocker, so it asks for the recovery key. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, 
Ah, uh, I do not know this one. I've not had this. Okay. Um, I see. He did say Windows 10, didn't he? Yes. Ah, uh, no, he doesn't say. He doesn't say which version of Windows. But seeing that I'm only seeing Windows 8 and above errors for it, um, I see a YouTube video where they claim to have fixed it. <laughs> and uh, two YouTube videos where they come to, including one one from July of this year. Uh, so I would look at those. I, I I honestly do not know this this one. I've not run into it, but it might be that uh, it's because is this always a BitLocker thing? Um, we don't use BitLocker. Ah. Um. NTFS can, uh, I don't know. Doing it live, folks. Doing it live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't. Um, I honestly, I would check out those videos. Uh, if you still have it next week, I'll, I'll do some research on it. Uh, and see if we can get you a better answer. Um, because, like I say, I haven't seen this one. And having said that, sometime in the next two weeks, I expect I will now. Because that, that's been our history. If I say I haven't seen this error, then, then I'm going to see it. We. Um, All right. So we'll, we'll have to do some homework on that one to find out. Yeah, cause that's a good one. I mean, one, I mean, obviously, it's not a common problem. Otherwise, you know, with the number of users I support, I would have run into it. Okay, let's see. We've got two more. Even yeah. if we're running over, I don't mind. And yeah. yes, tomorrow I'm going to put up last week's and this week's on YouTube. I promise. Tomorrow. They, these are going on YouTube. Yay, yay, yay. People can stop. It's It's been... Go on YouTube. All right. Uh, even though it's going to be fucking long. Maybe I might split up the questions and the build into two different videos. But um, let's Considering see. Considering we, we interrupted them with talking about your plumbing, probably a good call. Yeah. Uh, Josh has a long one. Uh, he says, I have a small dilemma. Though I get decent wireless signal throughout my house, when I'm in the back area of my house, my signal is less than favorable. I live a small one-story home. I wonder if a wireless extender or repeater would be the best bet in this case. Um, I do have an older modem, which I have talked about set up below. Would a newer modem help with this? Uh, could there be a setting I'm missing on my router? Uh, is there interference from other home networks in my neighborhood? Any help you can give me would be appreciated. All right, okay. first off. So I wouldn't, think, I wouldn't think it'd be the modem. No. Um, if we're talking about wireless signal um, and you have a modem and router, Wire the modem will have nothing to do with the wireless signal at all. The modem is just an import for your internet. It doesn't brought unless it's one of those combo modem routers. This one is a no, no. He said he said he has a surfboard, so it's not a co right, combo, is it? Right. No, it's not. Unless it's a combo, your modem has nothing to do with your wireless signal. If it's a separate modem and router, the wireless signal is all in your router so your modem's not an issue here we can set that one aside entirely um he says he's using a netgear pro safe uh port 10 100 switch um switch runs to a netgear nighthawk x4s uh router model 7800 r 7800 i got earlier this year i'll have a look at that now we do netgear is not the brand we recommend because it is you know not yeah. the greatest. Now the Nighthawk looks pretty decent, though. Yeah. It's got if if it's the, if it's the one I'm looking at here. It's got four four antennas on it. Um, one thing I would consider doing if you're if you're running cable uh, through these things, you know, cables to these various components, uh -huh. can you move the wireless device to a more centralized location in the house? Yeah, that's that's the first um, bet. Dep depending on where your, your cable modem, where your surfboard is hooked, it you know. Can you can you move that to a central location or run, you know, hard cable to it a short distance relatively? Because uh, central location in a small house is going to get you better signal overall than 
you know, being on one of the edges or the corners of the house, because then you're providing Wi-Fi out into the street and they don't need it. Um, here's another just a little simple stuff that you can think about with wireless signal. Where's your mirror? Where are you the mirrors in your house located? Um, this is a weird one. It does happen. Mirrors will bounce a Wi-Fi signal. And it will cause it doesn't necessarily cause interference, but it does make it harder for the signal to penetrate further. So if you've got uh, a router and then, and one then your wall, bathroom and, yeah, and then then your bathroom and one wall over and there's a mirror in your bathroom, that's knocking your signal back. Mirrors do that because they especially they have a metal backing on it. Um, yep. that, that um, this is stuff I've researched and found out trying to get better signal in my house. One thing I would look at and this is something you can play with. Uh, because that's a relatively new uh, um, router, it should have a fairly decent uh, interface, uh, GUI interface on it that lets you make and select options. One thing I would do with that is see whether or not the channel bandwidth is set properly. Mm -hmm. uh, check to see what channels you're using. See if it has a an option for to auto select channels because that will be the 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 router going okay i'm going to scan the channels periodically okay i'm getting a lot of on this channel from this from this guy over here a lot on this channel this other channel from this guy over here so i'm going to pick a third channel that nobody's using and not get interference which can you know have issues a few rooms away another thing to ask although uh, in the same vein as the mirrors is how old is the house What's the construction like? A lot of older houses will have internal features that aren't the greatest sometimes for wireless. Uh, next up, he's running both bands, 2.4 gig and 5.0 gig. Um, one thing I'd, I'd tell you to do is make sure you have those separated. Um, and what I mean is most newer routers, especially ones like this, this one looks like a relatively nice one. If you go into the router setup, you can set those up as two different networks. And do so. Yeah, do that because um, instead of just say setting it up as all one network and letting the device decide which one to pick, sometimes it's it's better to, and I've done this in my house. I've got them, I've got them on separate uh, networks. You can, that's the easier way to force your system to use either the 5 gigahertz or the 2.4. And while the 5 gigahertz doesn't have as wide a range, it does have better bandwidth and it does have better communication. So you might have a weaker signal using the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi, but it will be a faster weaker signal, which would compensate for, you know, the, the distance. Another thing, and this 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 one is there's there should be a tutorial with this with all of these new routers that have like four antennas, five antennas, six. They look like fucking demon monsters from Hellraiser and shit with all the antennas on them. I I, I was thinking more like you know the Centauri with their little yeah the, yeah. Um, there should be a tutorial about to how to adjust those those uh antennas because. They don't just sticking them straight up, all of them straight up. You're doing nothing. You're you're actively not taking advantage of the point of having those multiple antennas. Um, kind of. I, I'm trying to. It's hard to try to. Well, I say the, the if if you search on the on uh, on the model you have and go to Netgear site on it, they show the 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 router. And it's got two in the back sticking sticking straight up. Okay, mm -hmm. that's fine. And it's got one on either side position to point it out like this right and so that may not be ideal for your house but give that a try if you're if you've got them not like that uh or point one of them more towards the back room that's not getting signal yeah it's it, it it's the idea the antennas don't just they work on a plane it's it's really hard to explain but you want to fan those out at least two straight up and the rest of them can be a little bit directional that that will give that that's what actually enables you to get more coverage overall um 
as far as the expanders, those are going to be just as iffy. Um, if you get an expander or repeater, uh, I would recommend, even though we don't like Netgear equipment on here, to get one from the same family because then you know it'll play well with the devices you already yeah. have. And by family, we don't just mean the same brand. We mean the same product line because... So you, you yeah. say the Nighthawk X4S. So if there's a uh, Nighthawk X4S repeater or whatever, let's see here, Wi-Fi range extenders. Let's take a look there, see what they say. Uh, those aren't good. Um, but yeah, in the same in the same product line. So, um, uh, I, I would also take a look again. Look at the manual for this thing. See, see, see for the antenna placement. Uh, see what you can do to to get that going. Um. All right. Yeah. That and that's the that's the best we can recommend for you. Good luck with it. Yeah. If, if you can move it to a more central location in the house, that will probably get you your best results overall. Just remember, Wi-Fi is voodoo. Wi-Fi is voodoo. Yes, and oh, and also uh, not next to a microwave. Yeah, my yeah microwave. Um, um, unless you want your signal to go out every time you heat some hot pockets. Yeah, microwaves will knock down your Wi-Fi signal like it swat it like a fly. Microwaves are very bad. Okay, a last one, and hey, I never get to say this on the show. We got Vidya. Um, let's let's bring up the video here. I'm gonna be honest. I've looked at the video. It's not hugely entertaining. <laughs> yeah. No. No. No one is beating up a mascot. <laughs> no one is trashing a Verizon store. You don't give me good videos like you give Terra. <laughs> this is from Orca Commander. I'm gonna play it. Play the video while we talk about this. Um. Oh yeah. Oh, Taco Boy also mentions 2.4 gigahertz home phones, old cordless home phones. Those will mess with Wi-Fi too. This is why the five gigahertz band is is preferential. There's fewer things to interfere with it. Anyway, Orca Commander says, uh, "My friend's laptop started doing this. Please note that the video is in multiple clips in no particular order. It's sporadic and unpredictable in nature. Hence the kind of longish video section of nothing happening. Hardware's not been subjected to ah oh, what the fuck. Hardware's not been su subjected to spills or extreme heat. I suspect the problem lies with the video card." Sometimes it gets past the ribbon candy bars, and sometimes it does not. Operating system is Windows 10 uh, X64 Home. Laptop specs. It's an Asus Republic of Gaming. Uh, of course, these problems started happening after the warranty expired. Uh, sometimes it even has this problem coming back from hibernation. Any idea what could be the problem and possible solution? Well, those bars, that weird bars thing, it's definitely a video card issue. But it might not be the card itself. Um, it might be that flat ribbon that connects your monitor to the video card. I'm going to do some remedial stuff here. If you've got a laptop, um, how the video gets from the computer, which is what that part that's underneath the keyboard in the bottom part of the case, to the monitor, which is the top part of the case, is threaded through the hinges somewhere where it's clamped together. There's either a very, very thin or a very flat cable that's threaded through those hinges and it runs to the video port just it's kind of like the same thing as an hdmi cable only it's just very proprietary and special very 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 proprietary very very flat and very very fragile yeah and i will tell you this i had this same problem with my laptop Half the screen was just like, blur, blur. not well, I guess it's not the exact same problem here, but half the screen was glurching out. Um, and I'll tell you this, I never dropped that laptop. I never banged that laptop around. I would never been, it had been, I kept that thing as well as I could. But the fact that you're opening and closing a hinge on that laptop, that's putting stress on that cable, even just a little bit, every time it moves around. And uh, that can cause the cable to be damaged. It can cause the cable to come out of its socket on very rare occasions. 
Um, but that cable gets a whole lot. Imagine if you took the HDMI cable of your television and just kept bending it back and forth in the same place for years. Over and fucking over. That's what's happening when you open and close your laptop. Now, normally, it's never a problem. But on some rare occasions, it can be. And that may be what's happening here. Because he's got the, you can see the laptop, the monitor, it's glowing a little bit. So it has power. The laptop monitor has power, but no picture is getting to it. So that tells me maybe part of that, that uh, cable is damaged. Um, but he also shows the, how he pushes the button. I think it's closer to the end. Um, he pushes the button. To get it to come back from uh, hibernation. Come on. Let's let's do the backup, backup, backup. Let's play it again. Play it again, Sam. Uh, he did have that those glitchy bars there for a second, which was really, really annoying. I hate that. All right. Here he goes. He's, he's, he's shutting it down. Powering it back up. And this is from hibernation. He's powering it right back up. And boom. There he goes. There's there's Windows 10 right there. That's glitchy and intermittent. And because this because that getting the the power to come back up is a software thing. Well, not it's not a software problem, but that's it worked after he powered it back up. Um, that that's I don't know, Mike. You can double check me on this one, but that's that smells suspiciously like a heat issue. It does. Uh, specifically, when, when I say heat issue, uh, I mean the connectors on the video card or the video chip that's built into your laptop, whether it's integrated or. Let me look at the stats on it, because he did send us the model. Let's have a look here. Uh, NVIDIA GeForce GTX 9. So, yeah, it does have a dedicated graphics card apart from... Okay. In laptops, in modern laptops, especially with Intel and NVIDIA, what they do is when the computer first starts up and when it's not doing very much... The video is entirely handled by the Intel processor because modern Intel processors have their own graphics card built into them. When the computer starts to do stuff that's like 3D intensive or video intensive, gaming and that, that's when the uh, NVIDIA chip kicks in and it adds, it, it swaps over video to the NVIDIA chip. Um... That's, oh, that is such a fucking headache. Um, what may be happening here is there's a problem with the NVIDIA chip. Either there, the heat, when it warms up a little bit, that cold solder issue, we've had cold solder issues before. It means it's not, it wasn't soldered entirely properly and it's a little off. But when it warms up a bit, it, the solder flows back, the chip works again. So it may be a defect in the chip, or there's a problem with the laptop where it's just not making the handoff properly between the two graphics chips that are in the system. It's causing a glitch. Yeah. At the end of the day, and I'm sad to say this, this is not something I expect you'll be able to fix yourself. This is definitely a hardware issue. Which means this needs a technician to look at it. And while you may feel adventurous, I would not recommend, unless you know what you're doing and can follow instructions and you can get a tear down and you know all of this stuff and you can keep track of tiny little screws, I do not recommend cracking open, open a laptop for uh, the amateur. Because this is the kind of thing that requires pulling it all the way apart. Um, yeah, that's Loki in the background. 
Sarah's very quietly got home and Loki is very, very happy. I'll talk to her in a minute. But um yeah, this is one of those issues. You're gef you're definitely and since it's out of warranty, Ray. Uh hey! Okay, well, we got a little uh uh update here. Reflashing the BIOS worked. I'm never doing major computer choices at 3 a.m. again. That was our first question. We told him to flash the BIOS from never flash your BIOS from Windows. Good. We're happy. Good. 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 Never flash it from it from Windows again. I'm glad that worked for you. Yes. Um. As far as this one, this is a hardware thing. Take it to a local computer store. Find. Don't take it to Best Buy. Don't take it to Office Depot. Find a local computer store. Sco store. Check their Yelp score, and get someone to help you. Sad to say, this may not be a cheap fix. You can get their opinion on it, but this might be one of those, it's time to get a new laptop because the cost of fixing it, it makes it not worth keeping. I i am sad to say that, but that's the way it is with laptops. They are not easy to work with, and unless you know what you're doing, I, I wouldn't recommend it. You got anything else to add, Mike? No, no. All right. Well, we've done a whole lot tonight. Yay. I think we did about an hour and a half tonight. I'll have to split this up with the YouTubes. Um, we'll be back next week. May have some news stories, but our main feature next week is going to be our mid-tier mainstream gaming PC build recommendations for parts. Hopefully, uh... We can help you with some holiday shopping ideas. Um, we'll talk a little bit about upgrades you can get for yourself or your family as well, because that's that's going to be part of the parts we'll recommend. Uh, and if you have questions for next week, next Saturday, uh, send those to requests at radiodeadair.com. And meanwhile, for Mike and myself, we'll see you back here next time.